And we're live. Wait, before you hit live. Uh, <laughs> and welcome to Live Brush. <laughs> Ray, we are live. We are live now. Right now. Are we always are we always live? Yeah, I mean I'm always I'm always live. I'm always totally live. Yeah. Uh how you doing, dude? Dude, I'm Hello, good. Everyone. I'm good. I'm already just rocking right into it. I'm just going. Well, I, I see a blank Well, I haven't started gray yet. canvas. Well you're not rocking right in on it then. <laughs> right? Big time fan from Columbia. All right. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Hey, all right. Hey, Columbia. Nick. Beautiful country. Hey Nick. You've been down to Columbia, right? Yeah, man. Good time. You had a good Beautiful trip. country. People are awesome. Oh man, yeah. It was great. Had a blast. What about you, Tyler? How am I doing? I'm doing good. I've not been to Columbia though. Uh, one day. One of these days. Yeah. One of these days. Well. So he's probably he's obviously a fan of me, not you. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep I'm scribbling and deleting and scribbling and deleting. That's how it's gonna go today. Yeah, so what are you what are you working on? I think I'm gonna do kind of like a like a character design probably. Okay. Um I had this I've been playing a lot of this game called Elden Ring, um, which everyone's heard of, of course. But um, I play kind of like a like a warrior mage, and it made me think like I'll be kind of cool to design like a wizard that has, you know, maybe like magic in one hand and like a sword in the other. I don't know. So I'm just gonna mess like around it. with that. Yeah, I like it, man. I, uh, you know, I've never played it. You believe that? Oh, I bet you'd like it, dude. Although it's really hard. The, the Souls-like games are frustratingly difficult. But yeah, I think you might. might not be that. I'm not that. I'm not, not that, be good. that good. Of... I'm not. I guarantee it. You know. <laughs> uh, so I am um, going to be working on a composition here that actually we were talking about off stream. Uh, for kind of a scene that's based in um, what's it called? Uh, Heretics of Dune, the book, which is the eighth Dune book, and uh, Jesus. It takes place eighth? in the beginning. Criminy. No, I'm sorry, not eighth, fifth. My bad. How many of these are there? Yeah, technically originally six and then and then uh brian herbert and kevin j anderson came back in and finished two more so they are there are eight total in the main storyline that started with the first two that's a lot that's a lot of that's a lot of books. That's, a, that's a lot of books man that's a lot of books you think they'll make them all so no god i hope not I mean, come on, man. Warner Brothers, they need a big franchise. Just keep no. Going. I want to see, no. wor I wanna see worm I want to see worm people, half worm people. Come on. Oh. You know, they could actually make a good <laughs> a good movie out of Emperor not Emperor of Dune. But But it's 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 kind of a, a different I don't know, I just kind of feel like it's like a different A different type of of story at that point like it really changes the whole tone of the story kind of changes and uh you know it, it it's it's like if I, I i would i would imagine it would be the same if tolkien kept writing like did psychedelics and kept writing no <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty much and then expanded like what happens after the events of the lord of the rings and that just keeps like beyond appendices just keeps telling stories 
like Christopher like Tolkien did. Thousands, thousands. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, is that what he did? I mean, Christopher Tolkien kept publishing manuscripts, you know. I, mean, I was always sort of like, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and I've done actual work for the Tolkien estate and Lord of the Rings magic set and everything. But I've always yeah, been but, sort but that, of like. Nobody cares about that. Everyone just, cares about your hot just take. Just because I'm about to say, I'm about to have a hot take. I'm just sort of like, where, where are all these manuscripts hidden? Why, why does he keep finding manuscripts? <laughs> and we found another manuscript. Uh, that's funny. That's really funny. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah. I mean... So wait, does it take place, like, imagine if, all right, so I'll, I'll describe the later Dune uh, past the third one, right? By the time you get to four, imagine Lord of the Rings takes place in Gondor, but it takes place 3,000 years into the future. Oh, that's what would cool, it be though, like? right? That's kind of like Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not like but it's like a different. Years, but it's like hundreds of years. It's like a different story past that point. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Right. Yeah. I get you. I get you. So, you just like, all right. Thanks, dude. You know, and uh, it it's meant to kind of reset the story, like reboot it. Like it's okay. This is a new story. In the Dune war, in the world of Dune. That's really pretty much it. But then by f the fifth one, he reboots it again. Okay? Because the fourth one's supposed to kind of end the f the storyline that started in the first one. Okay. Right. Like there's still familiar characters. I'm not I'm 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 very much trying really hard not to spoil anything. So but then you know, they try and so then the fifth one is like, okay, thousands of years more into the future, like hundreds of years later. Are there any, I mean, you know, so these huge time, I mean, we don't have to talk about the plot and everything, but yeah, are the, are the characters we've seen like there that far in the future? Maybe some of them. I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, it makes it sense depends. though. You're going to make a sci-fi. You're going to make a sci-fi story. And you can't travel in space without time dilation. You know, you can't, you're going to have to deal with it. It depends. <laughs> it always. Depends. Yeah, I'm not going to answer. Yeah, it always depends though. It's like, I don't know, man. You know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to even answer that question. Don't, don't, don't. It's okay. You shouldn't actually. So that, yeah, that's that's what you're dealing with. But the fifth one, I like a lot. It's got some plot points though that I'm like, dude, come on, you know. But, but if you get if you if you just ignore that, it's really great. Okay. And I was okay. talking to um I was talking to a comic writer. Gosh, you know, I forgot his his full name, so I'm not gonna say it. But he was um he wrote a bunch of he wrote like uh an indie book that was uh, actually published uh Image published it. And he's a huge Dune Dune fan. He was saying, if you watch the Matrix I was like, he said, You like the Matrix? He goes, Yeah. It's like those guys loved Frank Herbert, you could totally tell because so much of the storyline is from the Matrix. Like huh. so much, so, I mean, so much of the story, their storylines from Dune is like, especially the last one. I'm like, what are you? And he started pointing out things, and I was like, whoa, that's kind of exactly what the heck. All what right, happened? You're gonna have to tell me yeah. all this shit offline. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, I got you, dude. But that's all I got. I'm not saying anything else. All right. Don't. Yeah. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. No. I I want people. I want people to enjoy Dune. 
as if it was uh, I don't know as if it was just coming out now that's the way I want people to experience these movies is that fair yeah yeah I think that's totally fair like I don't want you know like I don't want to because I didn't read the Lord of the Rings I read the Hobbit but I didn't read the Lord of the Rings whatever you saw Ralph Bakshi's Lord of the Rings you know, I did it until maybe I, I remember seeing the Rankin and Bass stuff. Oh yeah, but I never was into it. You know, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I didn't know anything about it. But so when the movies came out, I was like, what, what, what happened next? You know, that's a great. <laughs> How they could just end it there? That's like, yeah. I think that's like when I don't even know. You know, like, you know, when you have a friend and they've never seen like the Terminator or Terminator Two. And then you have them watch right. it, and they're like, "Oh man, Arnold, the evil Arnold's back in T two, and and it turns out like no, it's this time he's good." But like that's a huge reveal, right? But it it's well, you just I've revealed it, it now for me. Oh yeah, of course. But I've taken it for granted that that was even a like plot point. Right. Right. That, like everyone, if they didn't watch a trailer, was going into the theater being like, "Oh, evil Arnold's back. How are they gonna deal with him this time?" exactly exactly right it's like uh, because he was such a huge fixture of of the of the last i mean he was the ultimate evil yeah it's the terminator and he was you know it's really interesting that they kind of start him like that too and you really think like you know right up until that point in the um um in the psych ward Oh like yeah, you think he's a bad guy right up until that point, and I was oh, like, no, "Oh, like, that's kind of cool." No, no, dude, it's all the way. It's at, it's at the, um, it's at the mall. Like you think he's bad. Oh, my bad, my bad. You think he's bad. My bad. Until, the mall. It was the mall. Yeah. Until the mall. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Right. Because I, because uh, it was a white. Like he goes into like the, the side room. And I got that confused with the psych ward. Well, yeah, and they're in the back hallway, and he's got the roses and the, all that crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna doodle anarchy. for this. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think um, Nick DeLuca is talking about Lord of the Rings being uh, the future of Lord of the Rings being our history. I think that yeah, that was what Tolkien had planned no really yeah he wanted it to be like a the lore of of england so he was his his suggestion was that this is actual history or at least the mythology of of england oh okay 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 i see what you're saying so basically here we go hear me out people we did get a sequel to Lord of the Rings. It was called Harry Potter. <laughs> we did get a sequel to Lord of the Rings. It was called Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> World War Two. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, all right. Let's see what the heck is. Okay. All right, folks, I'm in Blender. Now it's just uh, scanning a thumbnail to see if I wanted to, or took a photo of a thumbnail just in, just in case I wanted to uh, draw on top of it, but I think I know what I want to do. So I'm just going to block this out. And then maybe we can get into 3D coat. And I could spend three quarters of the stream trying uh, to figure trying to out find a button. Yeah, everyone loves that though, man. Great reviews off of it. <laughs> I'm just gonna so be er- like 3D erasing this sucks, entire. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You're not really selling this. 
Dude, I might give this guy like a. You remember um, Excalibur? The movie. Starring uh, Patrick Stewart. Starring Patrick Stewart and Liam Neeson as side characters. What? Yeah, yeah. He's. Um, Liam Neeson was in that movie? Oh yeah, God. he's. One of the one of the nice totally kind of like I... betrays. No, 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 no. Oh, Don't geez. tell me anything. Oh, All right. I'm not going to say a thing. Does anybody know if Excalibur is on the streaming platforms? Probably. Um, I was going right, to give him. I was going to give him like ahead. the little metal skull cap thing that that um he has in that. But I'm, I'm going to do something else. Okay. Change my like, mind. Like Baez. Oh, like bald. Yeah. Dude, I feel like the stream sometimes has become the the um Joe Abercrombie series stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't be because you now know, it's the we, Dune stream. So sometimes we take breaks and it's like everyone's forgotten, you know? <laughs> so I don't think it's that big of a deal. We yeah, never. But now it is break. students. We're always, we're always doing. This is the longest running podcast. Yeah, take that. I don't know who's the actual longest running one. <laughs> uh, Doctor Who. We're, we're, we're the Doctor Who of art podcast. I love it. <laughs> That'd be funny, right? Like if. The only way we we could be be the doctor of our art podcast is if uh, we we change toasts, like okay. just straight up between seasons. Every season was a different set of hosts. Oh, that's a cool gag though. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's like, hi, I'm you know Slide Brush. Uh, I'm your host. <laughs> You know, Xiao Ming Wu. I'm joined with my co-host, uh, Jamie Jones. Oh, man. I'd watch this. Right? Can you imagine? Oh, man. Dude, I'm just... So sometimes when I'm doing these kinds of, like, character things, I just am drawing weird shapes because I think they look cool. And then I have to, like, figure out what it's going to be. Do you find that it just helps you get something down? So you're not like, like, oh, I wonder what this looks like sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, the the cool like disc-like shape over his shoulder could be interesting. So let's see what we can make that make that be. Right. Yeah, I... I'm doing that. I find like with 3D, if I just throw in some quick assets, like just one or two, Excuse me. I could just start building stuff. And I think people are actually going to see that. I'm going to show you how I'm, I'm going to do this as I go into mega scans just oh, to man. get something cool, really quick. Cool. Let's see, export. All right, let me see this window here because I have my window split in here. Yeah, you're not getting any of this. Okay, let me, I'm gonna maybe move, I'll do that. There we go, all right. So I like to just take one like maybe two. Where's the ground one? I have this ground one here. Okay. Oh, it's like a, a big rock. Yeah, and there's another one here. Let's see here. Just oh, yeah, we're good. Right. But these are super heavy right now. Hold on, let me. Oh, I know what I did. Uh, let me get 
decimate. And I'm going to go half that amount. Let's see if my computer doesn't freak out, which is Blender's going to be like angry at me. <laughs> Is it what you're trying to do, like you're a big bad. render or something? No, I imported. So you can import your mega scan assets in also. They're really made for Unreal. And this is, and correct me if I'm wrong, people, but like sometimes what you could do is with, and the reason why I say that is because when you bring them into Unreal, they have all different types of level of detail. So when you render it, it's like they won't show you if it's all the way back, it's not going to show you the, you know, 2 million polygon version of it. It's just going to show you the 20,000 polygon version of it, like re really low res, because if it's in the distance, who cares? But in Blender, it really doesn't work like that. So I can, I, but you could choose like what level of detail you want it. You want the thing to import in. So I'm importing it in the highest level of detail. And then I'm going in and just, basically just subdividing everything or cutting sorry cutting decimating everything um and i'm putting the ratio i'm just cutting the polygons in half so they're a little bit more usable so instead of two million polygons i per i have two million total which is still really too high but it's not going to really matter uh all that much when i'm when i'm done so yeah okay i see these are the things I never think about when it comes to 3D. Like, what the hell? There's all these... Like, I, when I'm messing in, in um, ZBrush, it's always like, you're about to have this many million polygons. I'm like, what, I don't, what does that mean? Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. yeah well, like, I, sure, I don't... Sure? Hmm? Uh, I, I don't... Uh, maybe? Yeah. I want it. I want to have all that detail. Let's do this. I don't know what that what it what that is. That's my problem. Is like I don't know how to optimize that, and I don't even know what that means. Blender, what'd you do? What'd you do, Boo? Oh, this will be cool. Get ready to go. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Oh yeah yeah. Can I cancel it? Nope. All right, this is, this where is like, like, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. We're like both figuring out as we go, and I'm like, oh, this is where I start making shapes that make sense. I'm just going to apply my modifier here. So I think I talked about this before, but in Blender... If you want to duplicate your assets a lot, um, don't hit copy paste or command C, command V. If it's the same, as long as it's the same same asset, uh, do Alt D, make an instance of it, which is just basically like a it's copying the same data. And so Blender views it as pretty is a, the same set of polygons. But within that, the cool thing about that is that you could still um, manipulate it for the most part. But it's not going to, like you could add modifiers on top of it, but as long as you don't commit those modifiers, then you'll be good. Oh, so right uh, now, like I have... <clears throat> I, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so for instance, like this is 1 million polygons, this, this thing, this floor, which is way too heavy, but I don't care right now. Um, and I duplicated it three times, but my poly count hasn't, my total poly count, which I have, like, it's below this area here, right? Actually where my head is maybe. Um, it, it says it hasn't changed yet. Actually, you could see it up here. My poly count has not changed. So I could keep duplicating, and it's not going to change. See? The number doesn't change. 
and that's good because it means that I can run this faster. You know, my scenes will run faster because mm -hmm. it's not dealing with tons of polygons. I'm, I was going to address Nick DeLuca had mentioned something on here. Um, yeah, do, do it. asking if I am avoiding chain mail like the plague. <laughs> but on that note, I have a cool thing to show you. Um, I sometimes I will, yes, avoid chain mail like the plague. But years and years ago, I made a chain mail brush. I um, mean, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. But this is the brush. You can see the chain mail. And it goes like that, and then you make the chain mail. It's done. How cool is that? What? A, that is the most egregious example <laughs> of cheating. <laughs> um, I did this because there's a an artist who I love, Angus McBride, who would hand paint all of his chain mail really perfectly. So I would look really close at how he did his chain mail, and then I just made a brush that, that did that. Um, Dude, I you, remember you painting chainmail. Yeah, yeah, I used to by hand. I used to paint it by hand, which is just like a series of loops, right? But if you make this chainmail brush, and then you, um, let's say you make it really, I tend to do this where I will. I'll make like a dark under. Under it, I'll make it pretty dark. You know, so it looks like there's depth behind the, the chain mail and then you can't see the chain mail anymore. And then I will basically clip it and I'll do like the highlights on the chain mail. So then you got your highlights on like the top of the ring. And then you get them on the lower one. Sometimes you can just go like that as you block it in rough. Um, but it's a great way to just like cheat the chain mail because like who the heck wants to paint all the chain mail. And if I use this in an illustration, I tend to like go in and polish it up a little bit, but, but also who wants to do that? I don't, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so yeah, I'm you can get lie. like a really quick chain mail effect. If you do it this way and then, you know, the, it's usually over lots of rings. So if you make the base really dark, you get a pretty good chain mail look. But yeah, this is usually how I, I do it. Uh, for like concept characters, I'll just do this quick chain mail. Dude, that's sweet. Look at that. Hey. Boom, done. Yeah. And just remember, you know, it's metal, so like center your your light. And you can get a pretty good and the cool thing about this brush, I have it like contouring to a certain extent. So you can kind of like wrap around things if you if you're careful. Like you can make it look like it's wrapping around a form. that so you can kind of get like the feeling of it going around something i usually do this on like a separate layer and then use that to add the details but yeah it's a quick way to do chain mail it's pretty fun um but i i just uh, there's like a noisiness to chain mail that i tend to not use it as much just because it's kind of if you're going to try and do like a super medieval accurate piece then yeah you're gonna have chain mail everywhere because everyone was wearing chain mail this is basically like the perfect armor no, nothing can cut through it you can pierce it but nothing can cut through it unlike the movies where they cut through it all the time he's just not swinging hard enough <laughs> you gotta swing really hard you gotta swing it re it's you gotta swing super hard and it's gotta be in the shape of a cannonball That's funny. 
Um, so I think I'm just going to work on the top part of this guy for now. Yeah, you could, you could do whatever you want. Oh, I'm gonna. We already know. We are. We know what your integrity is about. We've seen your chainmail brush. Yeah, you've seen my cheating. It's all about all the getting there. of error, Keen. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's all about getting there as fast as you can. Who wants to paint chain mail all day long? Well, that's a, it's an interesting. Yeah, let's, I mean, we could talk about that. I mean, that's a. Uh... It's an interesting idea, right? It's like. Yeah, we don't want to pay chain mail. We really don't. So, I mean, it, my, my, like, I think, like, uh, past school, I think you realize that you're, you learn fundamentals and then you get to a point where it's all about, okay, how, how does this serve the the job that I'm doing, basically? Yeah. How does it solve the problem? I don't know. Certain, certain, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I, I think it's certain, um, in certain jobs, it's really not about how well you can paint chain mail because it really doesn't matter. Yeah, there's, I think this brings me back to like something we learned in school, which was, and it was, you know, revolving around like the, um, the projector, like, yeah, anybody can sit and redraw the drawing that they did on a piece of paper and get it really accurate, you know, gridding it and all that stuff. But why, why you spend that time when you can just project it and then it's there? Um, yeah, yeah. Once it, once you've. Yeah, I mean, like, once you get your, uh, it's going to help with accuracy. It's not going to help with understanding, but, um, which is, like, the difference between somebody who knows how to draw and somebody who doesn't. Of course. But, yeah, you're right. You're right. At a certain point, it's, like, it's not what the job, you know, it's about what what does the job call for. I mean, I love drawing. Don't get me wrong. Um uh, and drawing and painting from observation is awesome. Uh, but if I have a gig and it calls for a likeness and I have three days to do it, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, at that point, it's like the point is to get the painting done, not the, you know, the art director doesn't care whether or not I traced it or, you know, drew from memory or uh, drew from four different references or one reference or, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at Drew Struson. He's using photo stills. Um, Dude, yeah. But exactly. it wasn't about that. It was about his compositions and the way he was able to compose an image. I mean, he's a master. Exactly. But even, even to the point of, like, just using a projector – to get the drawing that you did bigger, you know, like why sit there and try and grid it out and do all of that stuff when you can just project your drawing down or even, even like, even nowadays, it's like you can print your drawing and, and paste it down like Donato does. And, um, and then, you know, you've saved yourself that much time. You saved yourself so much time. No, you're right. Totally right. You're totally right. You have saved yourself a ton of time. And, you know, that's, and, you know, to, that is also, folks, if that's what you're, if you don't like doing that, then that's, Get out of here. you know, this is a, no, no, if you don't like, if you don't like drawing, for instance, the, sorry, I'm like, what the freak is going on with this thing? What's going on here? Here we go. 
Ray's at it again, trying to understand why Blender's. What's happening over there, dude? Dude, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows, man? I'm I'm trying to move things, and they're moving with me. Okay. Heck yeah. Do it. No, that's not that's not good. Oh oh, don't do it. <laughs> oh shit! Oh no. Yeah, screw him, man. This modifier is, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Uh, let's pull you over. I see what's what's going on here. Yeah, th someone in the, oh, in the chat, um, Gibbs, mentioned Paul Bonner. Yeah, I think Paul Bonner might disagree with us entirely because he's all about hand painting as much detail as possible. And that's totally cool. I, I feel like Adrian Smith yeah. is kind of like that too. Like he's really into okay. um painting tons and tons of detail. Cool. Everybody gets it in for different reasons, man, you know. Oh, of course, of course. I don't know. Yeah. I get a certain I mean, satisfaction out of like hand hand painting something, you know. Yeah. You ain't gonna get any complaints out of me. I feel like you're complaining. I, like you're I complaining. love it so much that I uh I love it so much that I, uh, uh, it's a, it's my livelihood painting real things. So <laughs> hand painting stuff, <laughs> hand painting stuff. Yeah. I it's... mean, I, I guess, well, and I'm in that situation, I guess I meant more like, um, like, yeah, I, I hand painted this design on here, whatever, like an embroidered design or even like, yeah, to just use chain mail. Like I, I hand painted all the chain mail instead of using a brush. I get, I get some satisfaction out of that. Yeah. I don't do it all yeah, the time, I mean, but um, I get satisfaction. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm you know, I'm all about that. I just find it when like you know, people try and cast rules over things and it's like, well Oh yeah. I'm not interested in that. First of all, no. <laughs> Uh, let me start by with uh, by saying uh, no, and uh, look, dude, it's you got to like do it my way. It's my way or the highway. Okay, you got to do. It. If yeah, you're not Tyler, doing it my way. You're not actually doing it. That's what I'm saying. Tyler and I've run into we run into people that are confuse what they like to do as the only way. The only thing worth doing. Yeah, that seems to be a trend in, I don't know, probably everything. You probably run into it in music. Yeah. Probably run oh, into it in everything. Yeah. Um, of just the, yeah, I'm sure. this idea that there's only one way to do something. And because that person worked hard to find that method, that that's the only way to do it. Yeah. And yeah, be careful with advice like that, folks. Yeah. That's just a Ray Pro tip. Ray Tyler yeah. Pro tip. Yeah, because it ain't true. It, it ain't true. It ain't true at all. Yeah, be careful. I feel like we learned that in, in, in a class where we had to like, the whole class was about trying like 10 different techniques and making an illustration. Yeah. And that was a big eye opener for me. It was sort of like, oh, okay. There's no method. There's you can get there however you want. Exactly, and well, when we were taught like why, you know, how they're different, how they're similar, they're all the same thing at the same time, like mm -hmm. at, in the same, to the same extent, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can render. You're rendering in a similar methodology, but the technique is different. If that makes exactly. sense. I forgot this is a thing. What have you done? What have you done? Oh, Tyler. Should we just well, end the stream now? No. <laughs> no, we should. Not this time. Yeah. You're not going to end the stream on us this time, Tyler. 
Yeah, is it still going? <laughs> did, I, did I hope so? I think it is. I think it is. We got some viewers. I think we got 10 Paul or 20. Paul Atreides of Eric e. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. We're good. Perfect. I still I to this I still to this day kind of laugh at Frank Herbert's sort of naming conventions. Um, it's, it's okay, you know what? Some of them are great, like Thufir Howat. That's great. That's cool. And then for Je- sure, Jessica. <laughs> no offense yeah, to anyone, Jessica, right? but it's just not a very sci-fi fantasy sounding name. No, and like uh, I just it's just uh, I. This is why I okay. So I feel, this is where I feel. You you uh, you got to read it for those. If you're interested in Dune, read the prequels, the House series. I keep saying it, but like after, right? Don't, say it don't again. do the prequels now, right? What do you mean? Like read the prequels after you've read Dune, right? Uh, yeah. Like it'd be like reading. I don't know, like Ender's Shadow or something before reading Ender's Game. Is that what that is? Have you not read Ender's Game? No. Oh, I saw the movie, though. We shouldn't so talk that's the about, same thing. We probably shouldn't talk about Ender's Game. I mean, the Orson Scott card kind of sucks, but um, but the book is one of my favorite sci-fi books of all time. Of all Orson time. Got, Orson, got, Orson Scott card broke my heart, but yeah. <laughs> I like it's just, game. I don't know. He's got ideas I don't, I don't agree with. And, you know, people got different ideas. People could think different ways. It's allowed. Dude, I love, I love, I, no. <laughs> I love Dune. I do. But Frank Herbert sometimes pulls some BS, man. And I'm like, <laughs> why did you do that? Because it's your, it's your novel. You can do whatever you want. And I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, being Alec. said, Alec, <laughs> on the chat. Duncan, Idaho. I know. I don't know what's going on there, man. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I know. Ugh. But like the you it know the not, Harkonnens yeah. and Fade Ralph, like those are cool names. Like that, but he just for some reason it's like oh, I'm not gonna try it with this well, you, one. This guy's name's you, Paul. <laughs> or or uh, or the fact that uh, that the Baron's name is Vladimir. I mean, I you know, kind of I kind of like that because you know we, we you know the Russians and all of that. I guess it's kind of cool. I, don't know, I always thought it was like okay. It's it's like it's as a lot of the names are as off like take you out of it like um, you know like Lord of the Rings has all these really interesting names that feel in world, and then you got a guy named Tom. <laughs> Or, or you got a, a pony named Bill, you know. It's just you, yeah, uh, Bill the pony. You leave him. You, dude, leave, you leave him out of this. You leave him out of this. I knew you were going to come to Bill the pony's defense. Do you tread lightly? Bill the pony was so beloved that he made a. a was he in the extended? Uh, like the um, extended uh, what what have you? Yeah, they don't. They am still I, like, making that up. He's in. He's in them. But they there's like one. Not scene. the main one though. Yeah, I don't think he really made it too much. And you can see the pony with them. But there's a scene in the extended edition where Sam actually like talks to the pony and says Bill. But like otherwise, they don't make a big deal out of it. They they talk about it way more Damn. in the in the book. You see, but that's the thing though, Tyler. Like, I. Well, the extended at this point, the extended cut is the movie to me. Yeah, it's the only version. Come on, so come on, folks. I I, I, I can't like it's amateur hour if you're watching the the, the theatrical yeah, ones. These movies are so old, too, which is wild. I know, man. Can we lit? It came out twenty four years ago. Jesus. That's like that was our Star Wars, man. That was our Star Wars. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, Star Wars came out. 
I was born in 82. Star Wars came out five years before I was born. But I'm just thinking of like, when well, the we were Return watching... of the Jedi came out eighty two, but right, uh-huh. eighty three. But um... Empire came out when uh, eighty eighty. Yeah, yeah. So but it I'm wrapped just... up in eighty two, eighty three. Uh, yeah, eighty three was um, Return of the Jedi. Okay, so that was when I was born. So you were born at least when a, when a good Star War had had been made. We didn't have to turn this. We didn't have to turn this show into a Star Wars show. I'm just a big. I'm a big fan of the original Star Wars trilogy. You know, some people are, like hate the Return of the Jedi, and I like. I have no. It's hard for me to be biased about. I mean, it was like my Star Wars. Dude, yeah, but I, I get know. it. I don't know why. I mean, how do you? How do you? Well, well, how do you go? For, how do you go? How do you go from to 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 defend the people that don't like it? How do you go from Empire Strikes Back to Ewoks? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I don't know if this is true or not, but I th- I think somebody said somewhere that the the original thoughts were to be like a Wookiee planet. And I think that would have felt better. Yeah. Cause chic. Yeah. Just cause the, you know, the, yeah. the Ewoks are just so obviously like a, to- a way to sell toys. And it's, it takes me out of the movie a little bit to think like those little dudes could take, take out stormtroopers and stuff. <laughs> Dude, how dare you? That was my childhood. That was not, that's offensive to say that it was, <laughs> It was made there to sell toys. I forgot. Name that one you, time I forgot you're such in a our tr- childhood. Jedi fan. I love Jedi. Don't get me wrong, dude. I love Jedi. Well, name love one it. time in our childhood, our 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 cartoons or the media that we consume is used to sell us something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never happen. Yeah, I, I agree. Nick DeLuca, best best lightsaber fight is in Return of the Jedi. It's so good. I think so. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I remember seeing Empire much like maybe when I was a teenager for the first time, really, when the when they released those uh the ninety uh, five original not the right before the special editions they oh, yeah. that released. Was 90, that was ninety five. Ninety seven was special. Ninety five Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so like yeah, that. And I was like, Whoa, 'cause my my grandmother my grandparents had that whole, that collection, I remember that, and then I had the special edition, but I realized I got duped because <laughs> I, for some reason, didn't know the difference. This is the first time when I realized the difference between full screen versions and widescreen. Oh yeah, yeah, Letterbox, because but it was hard to find yeah. VHS and Letterbox. Man, that was like my crusade to find Letterbox versions of of things on VHS. Yeah, I think my grandparents had the uh, had the letterbox version, so I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because the um, if they had the '95 versions, which were the just for everyone, the black, it was not just keeping black. up here. It was um '95, the black box edition was <laughs> yeah, a. What it. they did is they restored the original negative of the three movies, um, and this is obviously in preparation for the '95. I mean, the '97 special edition, but. In uh, 95, they restored the original um, negatives and had a really nice, clean, beautiful version of the of the movies. And they did a black box version of that that was letterbox. And that's probably what your grandparents had. Yes, they did. I have that version. It has like a little veiled thread on the back of it of like George Lucas saying like, this is the last time you're going to see this version. <laughs> <laughs> Because then we got the special editions, and that's all we got. That's all there is. Wow, dude. So he 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 hinted that it was like yeah. He hinted it on the back that this is the last the last version of live it of the films. Live it up, which is lame. So is that I what mean, the, uh, the I really like the, the um, go ahead? Was that where the um, uh, oh my god, 
laser disc versions were based off of? So the laser disc was like right before the remastered version. So the laser disc is actually sort of an in between of the. Um, there was an, another black box VHS. It wasn't black. It had it had the original movie posters on it. Um, but the outer casing of it was black, and that's what the laser disc was based off of. I don't know why I know so much about this, but it has been my obsession over the years to get the Ooh, original this is why I'm Star asking Wars. You. This is this is why I ask you these things because I know you know it. It's it's just because they're never Disney's never going to do it. I I feel like no, was, my God, no. Yeah, I feel like there's a clause in when they handed when Lucas handed it over that they were never allowed to release the original versions of the films. Tyler, let's be honest. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm all, all about in, honesty. In defense of George, oh, here we go. Uh, I like you. That is going in the con, like the contract. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I guess, but right. I, just, no. I just don't understand why it matters. Why he cares so much that the re, redone version of the films is the only one he wants people to see. I don't understand that. It's like denying history or something. Uh, I think it, with him, it's like uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I get the I get the idea of like you know, there's certain types of artists that aren't. They're always tweaking stuff, like Frazetta changing his paintings three thousand times. Yeah, yeah. A paint, like right, and it's just like, well, dude, that was the the version. What you know, that was fine. That was an awesome version. I have so many memories with that version. He goes, yeah, but I don't like it because of these, these are the issues I always had with it and always bothered me. So if I could change it, they're mine. Boom. Here you go. I get it. I, yeah. And it's his art to do so with, um, even though he's not Irvin Kirshner. So he didn't direct those movies. You know, he didn't direct the Empire Strikes Back. Um, okay. Well, yeah, that is, that is true. Right. Because it's a collaborative medium. But and in, in his, his defense, his... in his defense, he he didn't change the Empire Strikes Back very much. One like tone deaf change when it when it hit theaters, but that was about it. I mean, what do you? What, what can you change you on a perfect about? movie? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, what's the tone deaf change? Oh, the um. There's, there's documentaries about this, but the when The Empire Strikes Back was in theaters in 97, when Luke, you know, intends to commit suicide rather than join Darth Vader, you know, he jumps. Right. Like, right. he's like, I'll join me. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm going to just jump with the intent of dying. Kill um, himself. Right. The, the, um, Lucas added back in 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 the ninety seven edition only in theaters, this like Wilhelm scream. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Duh. While he's right, while he's that. falling, yeah. Um, and and it's like it takes away like it totally misses the whole intent of him. You know, like he's doing he's 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 not he's rather die than join the the bad guys essentially. And, and to have him that. this like have yeah. this like blood curdling scream. It's it's quite silly. It's pretty tone deaf to the the whole intent of the of Irvin Kirshner's movie. Um, so yeah, I don't know that that's that's a weird one. And then he he kind of like oh. changed some of the windows or whatever, in it, but that, he didn't change too much. I thought I there was something. I think you're missing something egregious. The, egregious from from M, from Empire. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about the the like? Banth or the, the the snow monster scene. Yeah, that's that's not great. That's a bad scene. That that was pointless. Horrible. <laughs> I'll agree with you on that. that, that the the whole point scene. was like okay, like it's not, it's way less scarier. Yeah, that the, scared the hell out of me. The whole point is not seeing it. It's a it's like the Jaws effect. Yeah. Oh, but man. you know, it's it. I guess just to to sum this, 
there are so many more changes with each additional release of the films after 97 there were new changes <laughs> like like yes. more rocks in front of r2 or like changing the eyes oh so that they God. blink on the ewoks <laughs> all of this crazy Dude. stuff what about the what about the crazy scream that they changed obi-wan's like crazy do you remember that no no they, which they one was that tweaked his when, when the ewoks like uh uh sorry when the um uh who are basically the fremen um how dare you the uh the the sand people <laughs> yeah what am i talking about yeah the uh why, why can't i know the tuscan raiders tuscan raiders oh my god man what's wrong with me today yeah so oh my god right exactly <laughs> look at this right alec hamilton um starting a fire in the yeah han <laughs> shit yeah he did shoot first right he should right he killed him uh, can i this is this is going to be semantic in the whole did han shoot first he didn't shoot first because he's the only one who shot <laughs> mic drop i'm gonna mic drop it right there oh i mean yeah i, like I mean it. semantic he did shoot first but also greedo didn't shoot at all so it's sort of a pointless situation not what i saw it's not what i saw I didn't care. He stepped on a, a job of the Hutt's. Uh, oh, he sandal. stepped on his tail. Do you remember this? Remember the shots from um, there was like behind the scenes sh photos from the prequels, and George Lucas is wearing a. Um, he was wearing like a, a t-shirt. He was wearing a Han, Han shot, shot first. Han shot first. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like you know what? F you, dude. <laughs> It was just such a, I don't know, an F you to the fans. Oh, my God. Well, I think he might have underestimated, underestimated how cagey fans were about him. Yeah. But also, if, I mean, if I'm, if, if ahead, I'm George ahead. Lucas, though, like, think about how many people told him no. Right, and that his. Oh, I back can't in the day, not, like, yeah, like that whole movie, like everyone thought it was a piece of junk. Yeah, and then I mean, I, I was right? just and about like, to play apologist for him too, so I'll let you have your apologist moment. I, I'm not a. I mean, I agree with you. I agree with you, but I could also see it from his, uh, from his side too. No, well, I agree with his. I can relate. I don't agree with it, but I can relate to his I reasoning. I can empathize. Yeah, yeah, I can empathize. I he, can empathize with his reasoning. He wanted, he thought Han Solo murdering a man in the first act of the movie was not a good way to show the character, you know? Like, I think it's fine because he was, it was self-defense, you know? He, he was about to get taken and killed. You know, he was about to get taken by a bounty hunter who who would have taken him to Jabba the Hutt who would have killed him um, but he didn't want like a cold blooded murder by one of his lead heroes right at the opening of the film so I get it whatever I think it made his character cooler I think it helped I mean I think it added to his redemption arc and so forth but that's just me I think Star Wars <laughs> had a much more serious tone that initially then was then retro conned when it became a kid's sensation. Yeah, I think he retconned history there too. Anytime you see um, interviews with George Lucas, he's always like, it's always been a kid's movie. I was like, I don't think Star Wars is a kid's movie. No. Like no, they blow up an entire planet of people. Han murders a man. Yeah, his his Empire aunt and uncle are was... burned to a crisp in front of him. <laughs> burned. J I Vader mean, chokes show... a man to death. Yeah. Just just for a disagreeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a kid's movie. There's a lot of disagreements in this chokes kid's a, movie. To, chokes a man to death. Chokes a man to death to uh while asking him the question. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know, or like, you know, practical. like letting him Captain Antilles, man. That was kind of a thing that I enjoyed 
um, you know, speaking of like whatever the original intent might have been, I enjoyed the fact that like the first time you see Vader, he's kind of like a, sh- a crappy lackey, you know, like you just said, he, he choked a guy while trying to get him to answer something. But when he, when he first meets Leia, she's like, treats him like a piece of garbage. Like he has no power. Um, right. That kind of presents him as a very different character. Like now he's this, the ultimate badass kills everything in sight, evil bad guy. But he's like belittled by this council of generals, you know, like, oh, you're, you're stupid old religion. Nobody believes that. And then he kind of chokes the dude and they're, they're still kind of like, oh, Vader, would you stop? Like, he's kind of a joke to everybody. Right. Right. Because they, they're just, they've become a, a bureaucracy at, by that point. Yeah, and he's like, the idea of he's like, just the emperor's lackey, essentially. You know who kind of nailed it was uh, Andor. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. What the I empire was like has like, ah, oh, yep, that's it. They're all they're like a total bureaucracy. Yeah, I freaking love that show, man. It's exceptionally good. All right, let's see what this looks like in render. Yeah, do it. Well, I have I have a preview off to the side, but I'm going to show you what I've been what I see. You can see that here. I think what I got we got about an hour left. I'm going to try and insert some color into this a little bit. There oh, that go. looks cool, man. Reminds me of Petra. Or Petra reminds <laughs> of me. Uh, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a um, season of this show if we didn't have a old man rants about Star Wars moment. Uh, you know, yeah, I I just also feel. I I'm maybe as I'm getting older I'm like try kind of understanding like I I used to have these like yep that's what I like I'm always gonna feel this way and I'm thinking to myself now I'm like well you know there's some truth to like like I'm I've never been in that situation so how would I fare if uh you know, he probably hears that he he had very little involvement with Star Wars and stuff. Like, he hears that criticism, I, I would think. I don't know how what he thinks about it, but... I mean, you know, I, I it is definitely a criticism that is untrue. Um, I used to think yeah. that, that it yeah. was true, but it is not. He, Everyone has attested him being there. He, he was sort of preferred to be in a um, producer role because he didn't enjoy directing. But he was he was yeah. there all the time. I just also feel like it's like, uh, I don't know, man. I'm like, well, yeah. I always swing back and forth. I'm like, well, if you enjoyed it so much, stop mucking about. <laughs> like you're acting like a director. There was a there was and a really you, good. Um, why did you why did you direct all three of them? Like all the prequels, man. That's like rough. Yeah, I think he should have done what he did with I I I don't know where I got this from. I think I heard someone talking about it in a documentary, but I agree with it that he used um Richard Marquard as he picked him as a director that would basically listen to him. Um as opposed yeah. to Irvin Kirshner was not a director that was going to listen to um George Lucas. So I th- I feel like maybe that would have been the right call for the prequels is to get a director that would listen to him and take his backstage direction, you know, his backseat direction. Like he did, like he did with red, red tails. <laughs> red tails. Yeah. The, the first, uh, uh, he, you can quote him on this in interviews. It was the first all African American cast movie. Can you believe that? The first one. Red tails. 
It's not, it's not true. <laughs> yeah, not true in the slightest. He, he missed. It's not true. He missed decades of films. <laughs> it's not true, George. I fucking love. Uh, excuse me. Pardon my French. I'm trying to keep it clean on this show, aren't we? Um, uh, you try to keep it monolingual. We try to keep it monolingual. Yeah. Um, I just I love that sound bite. It's just like what? <laughs> uh, I said I don't know. You know, I don't know what money does to you. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess take it from that point of view. If we ha- if we have to, he had enough money to change what he was what what bothered him about his movies, and so he did it. I mean, it makes sense. I don't like it, but it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, man. <sighs> I mean, I'll get off of it, but it's crazy, though. It's crazy. It's interesting. It's it's interesting because it the in the um when when Ted Turner was like colorizing films in the eighties, while they weren't his films, but he owned them. Um, George Lucas like openly took a stand against it and said you shouldn't change. He did. Shouldn't change the uh, the old original art. Um, this is a, like a weird. I don't know. It's weird. Well, you could argue. Um, why am I playing devil's advocate here today? <laughs> I like that. You could argue that, that they weren't. It, but it wasn't his. His. It wasn't Ted's movies though. Yeah, that's these what, are his movies. That's why I can, I can see why he takes a different stance on his own movies. It makes sense. Again, I don't like it, but it makes sense. Yeah. I, th- I think there was a time when I was younger where I just, I enjoyed the like reveling in the like, I can't believe he did this. I hate George Lucas, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, the, uh, the ability to take a really strong opinion. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, just taking I'm a younger person, whatever I'm taking, like a, this overly strong opinion on it. And now, as I've gotten much older, I've tempered down, and I'm like, all right, you know, he's a person. He made something. He didn't enjoy the way it looked. I don't agree with his choices, but uh, uh, he's free to do it. Um, and I can find the original version on the internet. <laughs> Thank goodness. Or the more the the best special. Uh, Editions, the Chilean versions. <laughs> oh yeah, C- cerveza. Uh, what's it, Cristal? Yeah, I think right. I think it's cerveza, cerveza Cristal. Cristal. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> those killed me, man. When you were sending me those, they killed me. I I was like. These have to be fake. <laughs> they have to be fake. And whatever article, I hope it, it, it I, I don't even want to know whether or not it's fake or not. Because whatever article I read was like, well, the reason why it hasn't been out was because they're, they're going through a lawsuit and they're trying to fight it. Like, <laughs> and this is the reason why they sur- it surfaced in the first place. Oh, yeah. Di- back. Disney would not be happy about that. Advertising alcohol yeah. on their on property they own? No way. Amazing. Amazing. Dude, good for them. <laughs> I, I like that it was like here's your is is like something your father gave me. Yeah, and then he, he wanted you to into have a, into a cooler. <laughs> <laughs> were those all of those real? Like, cause there were a bunch. Was was it just become like a meme that people were doing or? No, I mean, well, the like the ones with the. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back. No, I'm sorry, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. It's the last one I, I showed you, you know. Dude, the but one where I, um, I, I, the one you sent me where he's like taking the turning the shields off and he like reaches into a little like cooler and pulls out one of those beers. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Oh no. Dude. Right? Oh man. I mean that's good stuff right there. Great material. That's the special edition we I, all want. 
I just like that's it just makes me think like thank god the internet's here <laughs> uh, it is doing good for this world <laughs> <laughs> hold on here it's called yes a resa cristalia yeah. oh my god I was gonna do some uh, color, but I didn't. I didn't do that yet, did I? Nah, I'll just keep doing this. Yeah, it's two thousand and three. It's so good. Oh man! I mean, that's not long after the prequels started coming out. No, but like it was also in a time where you could kind of, like the internet. It, I mean, the world was, of course, wide open, but at the same time, it wasn't as open as it is now, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, like, it's like, so that could have gone under the radar, basically. Like now, yeah, like now it wouldn't be able to because the internet would have just slurped up whatever was being broadcast in, in Chile. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But man. I mean, man, you know. I love it. I want more. I just love it. <laughs> I like that the internet had a little bit of fun with that. I assume that that brand is still around, so that they're they're probably doing gangbusters on beer sales right now. Oh, yeah. People ordering like <laughs> I would just want to order Order, uh, order one for myself just to say I had it, you know? It's probably great. Uh, all right, so I am currently lighting this thing. I just wanted to... I'm just scribbling away on this guy. There's nothing much to, to say about him. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. He's kind of just turned into an old knight. You've chosen wisely. Yeah, he's like the the knight from Last Crusade. The best Indiana Jones movie. Whoa, I thought you... Wait a second, <laughs> Tyler. Yeah, speaking to the converter. I was under... Ex... Wait a second, when did this happen? Um, I gave him all a rewatch after, after the la- latest... Indiana Jones film, and I was like, "Yeah, I haven't. I, I, this is I a better movie. I haven't seen the latest one. Oh, that, this is pretty good. Like, it, it wasn't. I thought it was. It was more in the spirit of Indiana Jones than okay, like Crystal Skull was or anything. Although you know, there are Indiana Jones folks out there that would say Crystal Skull was very much in the spirit of Indiana Jones. I don't think so." I guess people could just say whatever they want. <laughs> but it's good. They Okay. I, I thought it was was a pretty good Indiana Jones film. It felt like the adventures of Indiana Jones. Old man Indiana Jones, but Indiana Jones. Okay. I mean I yeah, I All right. Although, but let's, they, let's 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 talk about the the gigantic crystal skull in the room here. <laughs> what what is this? I'm hearing your you said that the third one, Last Crusade, was the best one. Yeah, I think it's the best one. Okay, so for those who don't for those who don't know, maybe Tyler doesn't remember. We had arguments over this. <laughs> We did, but I'm converted, man. It's okay. I'm allowed to change my opinion, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I'm allowed to do a little bit of a, a victory dance here because I'm hearing this. What's up, Eric? You know, with like, you know, just, you know, Eric Braddock's here. Oh, my God. Yeah. Thank goodness. Save us. Yeah. No, dude, I'm converted. Yeah. You're talking Please. to the... I've been converted. Just pretend like I've had okay, a so... Damasian revelation. 
Eric, you're just in time because this is like uh, we had our, we had a huge argument over it. What was the, you know, again, like I don't care anymore. But in school, it's just a psychological damage. All right. So in school, I was like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I think it's the best one, hands down. And Tyler was so against it. I yeah. mean, yeah. so against it. I was a real. And um, he, and, I was a real acolyte for for um, Raiders back then. Sort of right, because you acolyte. felt it was the the purest of the Indiana Jones. Like it was the most pulp. And I agreed with you. I'm like, yeah, I, I can see where you're you you are where you're at. And I was like, oh, you know, it made me think like, okay, maybe I should I should give it a try. And so I gave Raiders a try, and I was like, yeah, it's pulp, but. It's like, it's great, uh, but it's no Last Crusade. I can't remember if were you one of the of the um, people that took the stance that Raiders is not as good because plot wise, Indiana Jones doesn't do anything. Are you, were you, was that no. the stance you were taking? No, 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 not at all. Okay. That is, just, that is an argument I just like to make. Oh, no, I, I, he doesn't do anything. Um, well, the argument they make, I don't, I, I agree that this is, this is true, but I don't think it makes it a lesser movie. But the argument that they're making is that if you removed Indiana Jones from the movie, everything would still happen. That he has no consequence to the plot. That makes it even more pulpier. <laughs> um, I think I think I agree with that, but I don't think it's like a an interesting point. I think to tear down Raiders. I think Raiders is fantastic. It's just not well, better I, than, than Last Crusade. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> I know, dude. It's crazy. Who when, are you? When someone comes to the realization that their friend was right. Who are you? <laughs> Last Crusade is greater than Raiders is greater than Temple of Doom. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. right. But Temple of Doom was my first indie film. Oddly enough, thank Eric, one thousand percent. That's me right there. And same, I same same exact track. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if I don't remember my order, but I to this day I would I think I always went towards Temple of Doom because it was all like the weird stuff when I was a kid. Um like the monkey brains and all this actually quite racist stuff going on in it. Dude, it's um, nuts. It's nuts. But it's a I, crazy film. I res I guess the nowadays I respect that that the filmmakers, Lucas and Spielberg, um, were taking like a, an extreme chance on this very strange version of Indiana Jones. But that's about as far as it goes. Because <laughs> that movie is bananas. <laughs> it's it's so crazy i mean it had its like refrigerator moment you know with the uh with the freaking uh uh the the raft out of the plane yeah yeah you know it, it that was a one hell of a refrigerator moment i mean it had a uh, lot of weird moments like indiana jones became like a zombie man Kind of. It's awesome. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> it was strange. What a strange film. Uh, I appreciated it. Yeah. Um. I I do agree. Raiders has the greatest introduction to the lead character protagonist ever. It's just un incredible. Yeah. There's so much going on. I mean, Alfred Molina, man. You know. Oh, I know. He knows. He knows how to usher in franchises. I I love I love uh, uh, Last Crusades like River Phoenix is like uh, the whole thing with the snakes, you know. Oh yeah, and how, the origin of Indiana Jones's scar. <laughs> That's fun stuff. Yeah, it's just like, like just wild. It's you know. That belongs in a museum. 
Studio. Studio. <laughs> Studio. It's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, I think short round was the best part of of Temple of Doom. <laughs> Definitely wasn't Kate Capshaw. For sure. <laughs> it was. It's just like uh, it kind of was a short round movie, though. He was the main. It would have been cool to do a, you know, at some point after Crusade, do like a sequel with like short round. You know, grown up and doing no. Indiana Jones type stuff. Why don't, why you say no to, to that? Stop. Why would you say no to that? Because it's just like like wait, right now? No, no, like they like, you know, in the nineties. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just like, just leave it be. Oh, not man. now. Just no, leave no. him alone. They, sh- they shouldn't he make it. Wanted... They shouldn't make any he just more wants Indiana to retire. Jones films. Okay, he just want to work. He just wants to work on his car. Or, dude's a former carpenter. He's tired of getting grave injuries on set. Did he like snap his ankle in uh, doing Star Wars? Do you remember that? Oh, was it Star Wars? I thought it maybe it was. Yeah, right? like he he was running running. Uh, he was like, uh, they were running into the Millennium Falcon trying to when they got that. Um, I forgot what it was. What he was stealing the Millennium Falcon. Oh right, right when he was stealing it back. Yeah, and he was running in. They like he caught something and just. Wah. Yeah, that's right. It's the, like, and that, and that very sort of J.J. Abrams Star Trek type scene with like the weird tentacle monsters and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love J.J. Abrams. I love J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Love it, love it. Only the first one, but I love it. I Yeah, I think the first one, I think with all of them, I think you nailed the first one. And then they just become a mess afterwards. But hey... You know. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the, the stuff they did in, in the second one, where they remade Wrath of Khan is just criminal. Like, because Wrath of Khan is one of the best Star Trek movies, and to do it the way that they did it is criminal. I, I could, we could spend an entire live brush episode complaining about Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it's just not as good as uh, the first one. Is that it? That's it. That's all you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't like it that much. Just didn't really like it. Uh, let's see here. You know what would have made Into Darkness really cool though, if it was like Javier Bardem as Khan. Yeah, I, I don't think Benedict was a good person. It was a, just bad. Uh, it was a bad casting choice. I I, I don't know. I think recasting I like Khan as a white much. Englishman is insane. Yeah, the whole I don't know. I mean, it's the whole point was like I don't know. Yeah, you need somebody like Javier Bardem, like his character, the original Khan was like Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men. Yeah, but like, like a little just, more like machismo. He had the same, he had, yeah, totally more machismo, don't get me wrong, but had the same type of like, oh, this guy can kill you in a second, and he doesn't, he has no remorse. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. this is not, a superhuman. This is not your typical villain. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, superhuman. He's like, this is not your typical villain. Like, he could kill our protagonist very easily. Um, and that's why Kurt had to beat him down in the in the sixties with the yeah. with the white white pipe, <laughs> the little you know pipe, the little pipe that he pulled out. I would have knocked think, him. 
Yeah. I think we've talked about this before. I, I think a cool a cool way to have approached if they're, you know, we're gonna do a con story. Sorry folks, we gotta do it. Is to make like make that into darkness movie sort of a remake of the episode, the original Star Trek episode. Ooh. Where they find Khan. And then like five movies later, whatever, you know, they made a bunch more, then have them meet Khan again. Like to set that right. up for not being Star Trek two. Like have this have, is City House all five. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Like have this Star Trek, this uh, this new Star Trek two, have it be a remake of Space Seed, which is the original episode. And and then you get introduced to Khan. The audience gets to know who he is. It can be like high stakes, you know, you can redo all of that stuff. Um, it'd be, I don't know. It'd be, it would have been a really cool way to do it. Yeah, I, yeah. That's actually, I like that Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> I can't believe we're agreeing. What? This whole show was about us disagreeing. Um, it's like you're, uh, actually making sense. It's amazing. <laughs> Finally. Thanks, Eric. I just read Eric's. Uh, oh, thanks, man. Nice, uh, nice compliments. Tyler doesn't read the comments. I do, though. I try. I try not to. <laughs> I can't read, too. My God, major, major problem. Yeah, I can't. I can't read. Uh, hold on one second here. What is? Uh, can we maybe get another? I'm almost ready to go into Photoshop for a quickie quick paint over. Oh, no, I just messed that up, though. Dude, did I just mess up? What's going on here? You got this, man. I believe in you. This happens. This is happening again, Tyler. What? I don't know. Like I, sometimes I feel like I'm like, what did I move? I don't remember. This is not the scene I remember. There you go. <laughs> In my head, it was way more awesome. Isn't that the entire struggle of being an artist? Yes. Yeah, In my head, it was I, you know, way I more do... awesome. It's a perfect tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, I keep, uh, I have to apologize. I keep, um, so I have two windows open, folks, and I have a rendered view in the opposite window. So I've been moving that around. So when I move things around, I'm, I'm actually uh, going through things. But this is a love, love this thing about 3D is that I could just travel through this environment that I made. Oh, oh man. Like garbage from no i didn't catch wrestlemania the... sorry I, in the, I'm, now i'm reading the chat while you're doing your thing hey by the way like wrestlemania do people care about that again i used to be so into wrestling when i was you know when it was wwf back back in those days dude me too i was me huge, too, man. hugely into it um and I, a friend of kate and i's he's super into it and he was just at wrestlemania and I'm like, maybe it's time for me to get back into that soap opera of a of a show. I think you're not alone, though, is what I'm getting at. You want to get back into it? Should we both get back into it? Oh man, I'm I I loved old school wrestling. I've been there was there was a, like uh, the other day. I I I just went down a rabbit hole just watching all the documentaries on all my favorite wrestlers. You know. Yeah, yeah. Nature Boy and. Macho Man Randy Savage and I was a big uh, Macho Man. I was a big Ultimate Warrior fan. Of course, um, my my literally my favorite was Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I don't know if you remember him. No way. <laughs> of course I do. With the with the with the huge uh, clippers. Yeah, and it's like the sleeper hold was his deal. Um, it, God, yeah, him and then oh, I loved Coco the, um, Beware. Coco remember Beware. Coco Beware? Coco Beware, loved Coco Beware, and Razor Ramon, loved Doink, Razor Ramon. Of course, Doink the Clown. 
doing the clown. <laughs> the um, what were the dudes that wore like the spikes on their shoulders? Oh man, the Legion of Doom. The Legion of Doom. Yes. Wow, this is bringing. Yeah, so back. I know I know. I didn't really watch wrestling all that much. Yeah, you just know everybody. Same as same with me. I didn't really play with GI Joes. I just know every single GI Joe and when they were made. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, dude? I couldn't I know, get I couldn't I know, get GI Joes. I probably know too much about. I don't GI know. Joe. I don't think I really. Ha- I had a couple of them, but they were expensive. I remember. When yeah, I was a they kid. We only had the like. We would occasionally get a cool vehicle, but the um the big stuff was we would never we could only ever look at it. We, my parents would never buy that stuff. Like the aircraft carrier? Yeah, the flag. I I used to have my dad like pick me up so I could look at the flag in the store. This was like I don't know, it was so expensive back then. Yeah, the USS flag, that's what they called it. <laughs> Didn't even try. Excuse me. Bless. But um, oh, they did. It does. Good. The movie has one of the best animated openings. <clears throat> as a, as a fan of animation, um, and if you haven't seen the GI Joe movie, you should definitely treat yourself to one of the coolest animated openings. Um, I don't remember it. I remember the movie though, like the dynamic of like what they're teaming up. No spoilers. <laughs> <clears throat> well, the it, in just to explain the um, opening, it was farmed out to a, I believe a Japanese company, so they did this incredible opening, and then the rest of the movie is just kind of like kind of low grade GI Joe <laughs> animation. Uh you felt I haven't watched it in a while. It rules. Like we're talking. Okay. I'm glad you're saying that now. <laughs> you just called it low grade like two seconds ago. Well, I mean, the animation's not great. I mean, because it, just by a comparison, He Man is a is a He Man and Masters of the Universe like uh, oh, I'm gonna have to take. Uh, yeah, it might be like I might be remembering it as awesome, and it might be awful. But I do remember the the opening was pretty good because it was a different company. Like it was it was like truly amazing animation with like all these crazy perspective shifts and that you know you could never do on budget that's amazing all right i've lost the plot on this uh composition here so i got distracted by the gi joe yeah, by G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yo, Joe. I watched a lot of that. Uh, you watched a lot of G.I. Joe? Mm-hmm. I don't remember a lot of it, but I watched a lot of it. Yeah, we were into the comics, too. The comics were, were different because yeah. we were kids, and in the show, nothing really bad happens. But in the comics, like, the Joes die. A bunch of the Joes die. Oh, really? Yeah. And we were like, what? You can't... That guy's dead? That guy's dead in the comics? Oh, my God. Can you imagine that? Like, as a kid, I know how I would be. I'd be like, but if he's dead, then, then that means... But not in the... Not in the cartoons, then I'm behind in the cartoons. And eventually... <laughs> He's gonna be taken out. Yeah, well, they did. They did kill someone in the cartoon, but it was in the movie. That's the only time they killed somebody. Dude, I don't remember that at all. Um. Well, I'm not gonna spoil it then. You enjoy. Don't, don't enjoy yeah, the 1980s like film. Just, <laughs> yeah. Like you just need to watch it. G.I. Right, Joe. Me, I mean, um, freaking, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, 
Transformers the movie. That was traumatizing to me. Oh, yeah. Great movie, too. Weird Al Yankovic did one of the that songs. Dare to be stupid. <laughs> one of my favorite. It was like, Bon we bow da 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 right? I forgot yeah. it was like, Bon we bra na was something very strange. I don't think, I think Amazing. I found out recently that he didn't actually do that for the movie. They just used it. Is that right? Probably with, yeah, probably without his permission. I don't know. <laughs> you did what? Can you imagine? Man, we're really getting in the weeds with old stuff. We're the old men now, Ace. Uh, you, I think it's you movie, are, man. It's a movie quote. It's, um, what, what's that from? <laughs> Starship Troopers. Oh, nice. Talking about Starship Troopers, have you played Helldivers? I hear it's, uh, if you love Starship Troopers, it's the game for you. I haven't played it though. I've watched, I've watched a lot of, a lot of people playing it and I'm like, I got to find somebody to dive with. Oh, all right. We're going to go, are we going to dive? Dude, I would love to. I would love to. All right. This but I, I mean, only if you want to. I think it's, I have to but you got to watch. Have, to have, you, have, have you watched any? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't have any. I don't have the game either. But that's the reason why I don't have the game. You see what I'm saying? Oh, because you know you'll get sucked in. C- c- no, no. Well, uh, no, because I don't have. It's like. I know you could play it by yourself, but it's not. Oh yeah, it's not the type of game that should like, do that. Right, it's like more co-op based. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, Daisy. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but not really, actually. Yeah, Daisy. I mean, it's, more it's, of a lone wolf game. It's more of a lone wolf game. But yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's like it's not as fun to play Left 4 Dead by yourself as it is to play with a, a crew. Right, which I've never played Left 4 Dead either. But yes, it's great. Yeah, you can play with random people. You can play with la- random people, but um, you know, you don't. Uh, it's 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 way better to play with other people that you know. I don't even know. What if do I know? The, the, oh, okay. What do you know, dude? All right, I'm gonna. What do you know? I don't know any. I don't know anything. I'm just trying not to. All right. I'm trying to actually make an image here. Thank you, thank you. People, people like my little old man knight. They don't like it. <laughs> That's how you know they don't like it. Pulling that stuff. It's looking great. Man, I think he's pretty fun. He's got like a he looks paladin. Like paladin he's vibe. part of. Oh yeah, we should talk about. Uh, do you want to talk about the rogue? Oh yeah, rogue is out. Our whiskey rogue is out. If anyone, if anyone wants to buy it, this while supplies last. Go to Quest and Whiskey. It's really good. We we finally got our bottle that we ordered in. Um, our, it is. It's. I think it's better than Paladin. Which is our previous bottle. Yeah. Nice, dude. Um, Wiley. Uh, w- Willie, sorry. Willie, Willie O'Art. I am not. I'm not using any. This is all just shapes that are stored in my head. Armor shapes and stuff like that. Yeah, Tyler's got an amazing ability to recall things. That's your memory. That's your crazy. Yeah, your memory is good. Memory. Your memory of like things that have happened and, and of stupid names. things that have happened. <laughs> yeah, and artist names is really un- uncanny. Re- that's a, that's a marketable marketable skills here. <laughs> and my memory really thing is, I will just store everything I've seen in my head. It will yeah, just be in yeah. there so, forever. 
I think I like it was the other day I think Kate was she likes to like challenge me to draw something and she some obscure animal and I I just remembered what it looked like. It's 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 freaking wild. He he never saw never seen a rabbit. But usually for me anyways, usually if it's like you know like a horse, I still got to get like lots of reference to get it to just look just right. But for some reason, there are just some animals that I just, I can just draw them straight from memory and it'll look like them. It's very weird. It's just it, never seen a rabbit. <laughs> Do you know that? You know that quote? You know what I'm talking about? No. Thanks, that. No. Frazetta painting oh, yeah. with fire. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's like, I don't know. I've never drawn a rabbit before. Did he close his eyes and he drew it? Never seen a rabbit. <laughs> oh, man. That's. I'm honored now to to hold something similar to Frank Rosetta. I just remember laughing like at uh, your reference one time when you were working on the your thesis work. <laughs> okay, thinking what, what, like I don't even remember this. What was this? You get posed for for uh, oh, Ahab. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I was just like. It's like the pose, like I'm looking at the painting and I'm looking at your reference. And I'm just like, what? I still do that. I still. How is that? That was like, and I was like, dude, that's your reference. How are you pulling that from? I don't even. This nonsense. Sometimes, man, I'll just. I I think I kind of got maybe from Zhao Ming. Like we had like this figure painting class with him and. I think you were in it, and he, he was yeah, like I was painting right next to you. He was painting the model, right? I was confused, like, because there was one of the classes. There was one class you weren't in with us with Zhao Ming. I forget which one. Um, but he's like painting the model, uh, and it doesn't look anything like the model. There was a Zhao Ming class we, you weren't. I was in. Did you didn't do? Did you do head head painting with Zhao Ming? Dude, I sat right next to you. No, but you, I thought you sat next to me in figure. You have. No, we remember. Oh, my God. Do you remember that class when I remember the class when you had your first like breakthrough painting and you realized that if you just copied, sat next to Jami and copied <laughs> his strokes that you can get a decent piece. And I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I just sat right behind him. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. And I look at I look at Zhao Ming's and I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? I just paint it Damn was like it. doing a master copy live. <laughs> Damn oh, it. Totally worked. Yeah. Yeah, it did, man. It's like I should have done that this whole time. All right. I need a focal point for this thing, and I have one. Let me just grab this reference. I'm just... All right, folks. I know this doesn't look like much. Here, let me show you what I'm looking yeah, at dude. here. Yeah, dude. It doesn't look like anything. What's going on? Sorry. There you go. <laughs> See? It looks like something. It looks like a great scene. Well, like, if you look at it in gray, it doesn't look like anything. It looks like... I'm looking at this in gray. It's all about talking that. about? <laughs> oh, let me see. Oh no, yeah, but you, you know, shut up. <laughs> I was like, are you looking at the stream? Because like we're a little delayed. Not to oh. give you too much behind the veil. Oh, yeah, I'm not looking at the stream. I'm looking at you right in OBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, you know, where's the stream here? Where's my OBS thing? I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm going to... This guy could use some tweaks, but I'm not going to worry about it. We only got 10 minutes left. All right. But I do, I like to, I mean, for people wondering, um, when I do concept pushes for like Wizards of the Coast or, you know, so D&D &D or whatever, whenever I do them, this is kind of how I, when I'm doing like, iconic character situations this, this is how I start I do it I'm like basically like fully paint out a black and white version of them so I have all my values really strong 
and I position them at like an angle where I can get to do a little bit of design work. I don't, you know, for magic, they, you rarely need any sort of turnarounds because it's a card game and you don't see, you rarely see anybody from um, the backside. You almost always see them from the front. So we don't spend, on a lot of the concept pushes, we don't spend too much time on the back of the character. Sometimes we don't even spend that much time on their feet because you know, you're rarely gonna see their feet in the card frame as well. It's only a two inch card frame. Right, versus like video game stuff, when you've worked on that, is what's that? Uh... Uh, well, you absolutely have to do a can turn around because right. they're usually gonna be a 3D asset. Um, you see them from all kinds of angles, and there's a lot of video games where you see the character from the behind all the time um, because it's like third person. You know, like God of War is a good example. So you need to make the back of the character very interesting in those situations. Uh, but, you know, it's it's not needed at almost at all when it comes to Magic the Gathering. What the, you'll, you'll see, like, the, the characters get fully turn done you know turnarounds on them um but that's just for like the cinematic stuff that they do where they do like th really cool cinematic trailers and that kind of stuff right so but they know ahead of time this is what they're gonna feature yeah like they i mean like all the main characters the planeswalkers for magic have full character sheets with turnarounds oh right um, right because they're the planeswalkers right yeah. yeah but when we're designing new stuff for the sets and even if it's new characters we, we aren't we aren't focusing on turnarounds you know we only typically for magic on a concept push we only have about 15 days to um create the assets they need to build the world out um, and spending time on turnarounds is, is basically a waste of time because you're not going to see it in the actual card set. We, we call it at card level. You're not going to see it at card level. So um, right. we just don't worry about, we don't worry about those designs. And some things, Do we, especially uh, with magic is concerned, some things can be solved at card level. So when you do it, when you're, when you're saying that you're like, we won't design it now, but when it's commissioned, we'll just have the artist design it for the commission. Right. So that's solving right. it at the card level. Right. And Which you're, I, ma I you're a magic that, artist, uh, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what that, those, uh, conduit, the, one of the cards that got released recently that I, that I did. I was asked to uh, solve it on the car level. Yeah, you designed the little conduits, right? Yeah. And it was cool because it looked super, like you weren't even on that concept push and you were able to design something that looked super appropriate to the, the universe. Well, thanks, dude. That means you're nailing it. <laughs> Expect nothing less. Uh, that was a lot, that was a lot of fun. I like doing that stuff. You know, it feels like you, you can kind of uh, when you when you get that type of uh, leeway to do that type of stuff. It's it's cool. Mm -hmm. You don't always get it's it. It's always a lot of fun. No, you don't. You don't. And I'm always uh, appreciative when I when I do. Cause it, uh, it just allows me to have fun with, uh, yeah, with, uh, with, with things like that. So, uh, sorry, I'm just distracted here again, trying to find a file. So well, to speak here's to what you some... just said though, it, it is. It's fun when you actually get to design stuff as opposed to painting to a style guide when you get to be the the one that commands the the design of something. I think that's really fun. Yeah. You know, also it I think it's I think even I mean with yeah. I mean with with magic uh 
you're also offered you're right you're right it's not like uh, i'm just trying to think of like uh i'm always i love looking at little opportunities to to be like well they didn't say this so you know i could totally maybe push this let me see if you know let me see if i can put this in this is within the style guide yeah, I love you know to what I'm do saying. That. So like, I love like, to do that. Yeah, it's I love in the, to push it. It's within the scope. Yeah, it's within the scope, but it's not. You know, it must look like these are the exact things. Like sometimes they are like main story points, but there there's a lot of things you, that could be left up to interpretation. I've been for at least I've been fortunate enough to get cards like that, uh, where it's like I don't know what does this look like. Well, dude, I've even had over the years like i've often had a scenario where i get concept art and i'm and it's like for D &D or something and i'm like oh this looks this looks dumb (laughs) you know it's like some really old design that i i think needs an update and i would just like change it (laughs) i'd just make it better and send it in (laughs) sometimes that doesn't go over well but it went over went over well on D D quite a bit Uh, that's great but now i love that like now i'm to the i'm to the point now where i'm like annoyed if they're like no it needs to look like this and i'm like no i made it better damn it that's funny yeah to think that how much that's evolved right yeah oh man it's changed so much that's um i got a question it's probably a question for both of us um yeah. Um, what are we thinking about when we are picking our values uh, for this piece? And it says for this piece, but um, I'm I'm thinking about focal points, and I think this is important in designing any character is um, where you want your focal points to be. So I I gave him this like white collar because white collars work great as focal points. You know, you look at any uh, famous J uh, J C Leyendecker arrow collar illustration. Um, the, they all have wonderful compositions because you have that nice dark suit and then the really bright collar piece. Um, and then everything else I'm just kind of keeping close in value so that I can keep that as a compositional element. How about you, Ray? Um, yeah, I'm thinking foreground, middle ground, background. I'm making sure that uh, I have a clear separation between those things. Uh, even in... Um, 3d i'm i'm lighting things so that they are like that and i'm i'm uh, composing that stuff in my my mind so i always think about what what i want my focal point to be and then how to go about building it building around it so that it uh you know the, the 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 viewer looks exactly where i want them to look at And that is always the area of highest contrast. Yes. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. But that that, that is not actually, very helpful. Yeah, it's actually going to be your last words because we are at time here. Dude, we are. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to do all transforms. I'm going to go like this. And you better like do that. a magic trick. And we're all going to be like, <gasps> whoa, whoa, you did. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna render. That's incredible, dude. Dang. Hold on, just let me just whipping a landscape right together here. super fast. And then Starlight Sun, crank that. Ooh. And where are you, you house? Wherever that house is, oh, because it's in the wall. Oops. Alright. Well, I didn't have time to really look at it but if the house were in the center (laughs) all right what would that look like it would look like crap but this is what i was talking about you know like designing it so that it has some sort of a uh, a focal point yeah yeah that's great you know this is the wrong asset a bunch of contrast uh, right there yeah oops um, just to answer this last question before we before we hang up, um, mm-hmm. the 
Willio Art is asking him, when you say keep your values close, how do you do that without making it muddy? Um, your values being close won't make it muddy. It's you, the colors you use are what will make it muddy. Um, having values close is actually a great way to do atmospheric perspective. Um, it's a great way to just keep focus off what you don't want people to look at. Um, controlling your values and ends up being really great. And you can do it intentionally. And in fact, I recommend doing it intentionally to draw focus where you want. So um, keeping your values close, you know, like Ray's not, he's rendering it this way, but the far distance between these openings and the rocks, all the values are really close there. And that, that yes, um, gives yeah. the um, hint and the illusion of them being really far away. I don't know if he could, if he could see that, but you could see like I'm, I'm actually adding that so that I can get some sort of separation between those, those areas. Yeah, it's fantastic. This is the, the wrong asset for it, but you know, uh, yeah. Uh, all right, I'll get that out of the way and then hit this and we'll, uh, we'll just have some fun here. All right. So Tyler, Right. I guess, uh, who, who have you been? I uh, have been and always will be Tyler Jacobson. Um, you can find me at tylerjacobsonart.com and you can find me on Instagram, which is where I do most of my posting at Tyler Jacobson art and, um, stay tuned for more whiskey news, of course, at quest and whiskey. Ray, how about you? Sweet. I have been. And uh, uh, well, sometimes I'm, I'm usually most most of the time. Uh, Ray Bonilla, you could uh, find my work at raybonilla.com uh, and on Instagram at Ray Bonilla Painter. Uh, and yeah, um, I don't have anything coming up yet that I could talk about. But check out my Instagram for for anything. I'm working on some good stuff, so looking forward to sharing that in the near future. And um, if you'd like to, uh, for those uh, for those of you uh, joining us live, thank you so much. Uh, we we really appreciate it. Uh, always love the and always appreciate the uh, the comments in the uh, in the chat. If you're uh, talking to us or or actually hanging out with us in the future on demand, we really appreciate you watching us uh, uh, in the future. And um, yeah, we appreciate a like or subscribe. Really helps out the channel. And uh, consider following us on Instagram um, at live.brush to keep up on when we stream. Uh, and we'll always announce it uh, when we're about to go streaming. And also we share things uh, like different art and also things that we're working on and fun stuff like that. And uh, I, think, I think that's it, Tyler. I can, dude. You always do a great outro. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we're signing off and we'll see everyone very likely next week. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Ray.